All right, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about Salesforce certifications, looking back at 2021, and then I'll give you some of my predictions for 2022 as far as which Salesforce certifications you should be getting and why these certifications impact your ability to land jobs, get promotions, and demand higher pay. So Mason Frank released their Salesforce year-end survey in December 2021. And based on that survey, I'm going to talk a little bit about what they found from a certification perspective. I'm also going to talk to you about what we've seen inside the Talent Stacker Salesforce Career Development Program, where we helped just over a thousand individuals start their Salesforce careers in 2021. And therefore, we have quite a bit of data about entry level Salesforce jobs and the impact of Salesforce certifications. So the first thing we're going to look at here, and I'm kind of looking down because uh, I have some notes here, is that 76% of job applicants have at least one certification. So let me take this back a step. Job applicants is what we're going to talk about here. And I have had some people ask me, do I really need a certification to get a job? I know some people who landed a job without a certification. And then on the other hand, I have people who say, I know so many people who have one or two certifications and they can't find a job. Do I need three or five or how many do I need? And the truth is it's not about certifications at that point. If you have a certification, that's plenty, but let's look at the survey results. 76% of Salesforce job applicants have at least one certification. An additional 9% are currently working towards their first certification. And then the remaining 15% don't have a certification and aren't currently working on getting one. So let's think about that. 76% of job applicants already have a certification. 9% are working towards that certification. So we have 85% of individuals who understand that having at least one certification is meaningful to landing a Salesforce job. Then we have 15% who have, for whatever reason, decided that they don't need to differentiate themselves with a certification. So uh, the important thing here is understanding what we're doing. When you're looking to land an entry level job, yes, your technical expertise has a factor in whether or not you will land a job. But chances are, if you're entry level, you're not going to have technical expertise. Even if you have a certification or three, you're still not going to be well polished and just a Salesforce savant, no matter how many certifications you have with no experience. So when we look at these numbers, the way we differentiate ourselves is to get a certification. It shows some level of dedication to the career, and it also shows some level of acumen for the skills that you need. So if you're one of the 15% who's going, I don't have a certification and I don't think I should have to get one. I think they should have to train me on the job. That's a nice thought. I, I can see where you're coming from, but you're competing against 85% of people who are already certified, and maybe they want on-the-job training too, but at least they've shown some dedication and have a certification. So without the certification, unless you have a really good network or you have somebody on the inside who can get you into interviews, the chance of you even getting an interview without a certification is gonna be difficult because the other candidates already have one or they're working on it now. Now, the next thing I'm gonna look at uh, is how employers and Salesforce professionals look at certification. So based on the survey, Employers and Salesforce professionals feel that certifications provide a benchmark for your skill and they show dedication to the profession. And that's spot on. I mean, it's what I just talked about there is that it shows your dedication to the profession. It doesn't make you an expert. It doesn't make you amazing at Salesforce. It simply shows that you're dedicated and it provides a base level information for the employer to go, they know enough about Salesforce to be certified. They care enough about Salesforce as a career to be certified. All right, I'll look at their resume. I'll look at their LinkedIn profile. So that's what we're doing there. Now getting additional certifications can be beneficial. So your second certification, but we're looking at a diminishing marginal return there. So sorry for the sort of economics uh, lingo there, but each certification for entry-level jobs is going to come with a diminishing marginal return. So uh, you get that second certification. Yeah, that's going to help an employer differentiate you some. You've got two certifications where we saw 76% uh, 
uh, you know, have at least one certification. So you're differentiating yourself there a little bit. Um, but once again, if you don't have experience, then they're definitely going to pick somebody with a certification plus even two to three months of volunteer experience over somebody with two certifications with no experience. Um, and really that volunteer experience is going to help you interview more fluently. You're going to be able to talk about stories. You're going to be able to talk about the experience you have and not just about your theoretical knowledge and ability to take multiple choice tests. All right. So the next thing that I think is meaningful to you guys is the most common certifications in the Salesforce ecosystem in 2021 were uh, in order, the Salesforce administrator certification, the process app builder certification, and the developer one certification. So these were the three most common certifications in 2021. And the certification I would still recommend getting first would be the administrator certification. This shows a foundational knowledge of Salesforce even if you want to be a developer or a business analyst or anything else, start with the Salesforce administrator certification. It shows you have foundational knowledge of the platform. Now, the second certification I would recommend would be platform app builder. And that is because there's a lot of overlap between the administrator exam and the platform app builder exam. So you'll notice once you finish the training for the administrator exam, and you head over to the prep trail for the platform app builder exam, you're already going to be almost 50% done. That's because there's 50% overlap and it's going to be much easier getting the platform app builder certification once you're comfortable with the administrator topics and you've gotten that one. Um, I'll talk about the third one here in just a little bit and why that's true going into 2022 to be the third most popular certification. So what value, I've got a quick note here. So what value do the second and third certifications represent for entry-level talent? Does it make you more marketable? Um, and we talked about that just a moment ago, but just reiterating that yes, it does make you more marketable. Uh, but I would say if you're going to spend time on something, think about, you know, if you have limited time available, uh, instead of that second or third certification, I would probably focus more on getting some volunteer experience or uh, your LinkedIn branding, uh, your engagement on LinkedIn, sharing, commenting, posting, uh, writing, engaging content to uh, the audience that you're targeting, which is employers, recruiters, uh, other Salesforce professionals, things like that. That's probably going to have more influence on your success uh, than getting another certification. Also, interview prep is often overlooked. Uh, so those are things you can spend your time on rather than those second and third certifications. You can focus on things that are probably going to help move the needle a little bit more, uh, like the things I mentioned, interview prep, volunteer experience, LinkedIn, and your personal branding. All right. So the thing I mentioned before, the third uh, certification, I think going into 2022, we're probably going to see the third certification be become, the third most popular certification become the UX designer certification. Uh, the reason for that is because right now it's a fairly new certification and there isn't a lot of content on it, which means you can learn the content rather quickly. So it's it's low hanging fruit. It, uh, once again, these certifications aren't going to mean you're an expert. It's going to mean you've used some strategy to how to stack these certifications quickly so you can turn some heads in the ecosystem. So I think going into 2022, you're going to see... Uh, administrator and platform app builder become, you know, still strong for the first and second. And then I think you're going to see UX designer, uh, sort of coming in there, uh, and becoming third, third spot with developer one being the fourth spot, not because developers aren't needed. They're absolutely needed. Um, just because of the ease of getting the UX designer as a third certification. And it looks pretty good on a resume. If you can get three certifications, um, you know, it doesn't look bad. Of course, you know, going back the the actual hands-on experience and your personal branding and those things are really important. But if you've got time to knock out platform app builder and UX designer, obviously 3X certified is gonna turn some heads, but as long as you can, you know, carry, carry your weight in interviews, uh, of course. I mean, you show up to the interview with three certifications and you can't carry a conversation, you're still not gonna make it very far. All right, uh, so, 
another talking point here. Do you see this trend continuing or changing in 2022? Uh, what certifications do we see emerging? I think you're going to see more on top of the UX designer certification. I think you're going to see more uh, specialty certifications uh, becoming more popular, uh, like CPQ, Pardot, Marketing Cloud. Uh, we still don't have a lot of great training resources on these, but they are becoming more prevalent. So I think you're going to see uh, better training resources in 2022 on some of the specialty exams, and you're going to see a, a, at least a somewhat lower barrier uh, for individuals to get that information. So I, I do think you'll see better training on more specialized topics and more of those certifications uh, coming forward. So I also have another note here. If you aren't certified yet and you're wondering what Trailhead alone might mean for your uh, ability to market yourself, 71% of the Mason Frank survey participants feel that Trailhead alone does not impact your success in landing a job. So that doesn't mean it's true, but it means the feeling in the ecosystem is that no certification, just trailhead. 71% say that, you know, you can talk about your super badges uh, or whatever else, but at the end of the day, you're gonna need that certification in order to show that you are, you're, you're serious about this career. I think that pretty much wraps up this conversation. Obviously certifications still play an important role in the Salesforce ecosystem. Uh, if you're not aware, consultancies care more about certifications than other companies that might be hiring you. This is because certifications play a role in the partner scoring for the consultancies, which means that if you have you know, three certifications instead of one, they're going to have a, a little bit higher partner score because they hired you. Uh, so that could impact what you're paid. Um, and also, a lot of times consultancies, when they hire you, they will give you bonuses or raises if you get additional certifications. So that can be a good reason to, you know, interview and what I would call sort of sandbag your certifications where if maybe you already have two certifications and you, you think you have enough to get the third, go ahead and interview because what you might find is that if you land that job, they'll give you a raise as soon as you get a third certification and you could get that rather quickly if you're prepared. Um, so just think about that. Consultancies care a lot more about the certifications than maybe a typical in-house uh, Salesforce professional. And you can use those to your advantage as well. Um, so that's pretty much it. If you want to land a Salesforce job, my advice would be to make sure you have at least one certification. And then you can check out our other content around getting volunteer experience, interview prep, job search strategy, LinkedIn branding, and pretty much everything you need to secure your spot as a Salesforce professional.